Uh, thanks for coming on today, guys. Appreciate it. again all your your coverage on our team. A lot of people are excited, certainly about uh, the tournament and uh, the program, and you guys play a big part of that. So appreciate that. The uh, it's it's great to be uh, extending our trip. It's uh, obviously an interesting time to all be down here. We got four or five teams in the same hotel. Um, so it kind of has like a Final Four feel um, at the Sweet 16, just because we're usually go to a destination and see other teams. Um, the, the facility that we'll be playing at is is really nice. Um, our team was able to walk that yesterday after a train session. Um, the committee's done a really nice job of putting this together on relatively short notice. Um, so all things considered, it's it's um, the, the trip and the events going really well. Marquette will be, um, as always, a tough match. They uh, they've had a great um, regular season in the Big East. The Big East is one of the top conferences, so they've been they've been battle tested. They uh, they have a belief. They've won a lot of overtime games. Um, Louis Louis Bennett's been there a long time and is is a good coach, and they'll be prepared. So. Um, I look forward to the, to the match. It will be uh, uh, a different different type of feel. There there won't be certainly as as direct as, as uh, Brooklyn, and um, certainly they have a couple of difference makers like Brooklyn did. But uh, they'll, they'll probably look to play a little bit more through the lines than uh, than some of the direct play that we faced at times against Brooklyn. So different different type of match, um, but certainly the stakes are the same, and we're uh, looking to get a good result. Jeremy Price and then Tom Brew. Hey Todd, uh, number one thing going into this game, I guess you get Joey back. Um, how much does that sort of open up some some options for you? I know you kind of kind of limited the last couple of games because of that. Yeah, it's. I mean, Joey, you know, as a true freshman, his leadership and um, feel, um, his his passing range, and I'd say most of it, just really just the continuity of our back line with Spencer being out. Um, that, that's a lot of moving pieces. I mean, again, Brett Beebe is now played, I think, everywhere um, in the, the, the midfield and back line. Um, we just haven't put him a striker yet. Um, and Maloon played striker, left midfield, right midfield, right back, and left back all in the last game. So uh, he's, he's trying to catch Beebe with the versatility, uh, Swiss Army knife uh, term that I give Beebe. But Joey will be be great to get back. And again, it gives us another move. If we want to uh, spell someone in the back, we can use Lawson White in midfield. Um, it was great to give him that, that we had to, but give him that experience in a big game and play a lot of minutes. And he, you know, the, the his injury held up well. The one he recovered from, he was just cramping from uh, the load, which we knew we were kind of pushing the amount, and we just got probably just enough out of him to help us get what we needed to get done last game. Tom um, Brew, and then Jack Edwards. Todd, we've talked so much all year about Victor and Roman and such, but uh, especially now in these last couple of games where you're dealing with, you know, one goal situations and, and tight games, and I'm sure you're going to see that all going forward. I mean, that back line of yours has played really, really well all year. I mean, the fact that you can have a lot of confidence in them, does it make it any easier for you in trying to sweat some of these things out? Well, I think the, you know, one, I think our conference sets us up well for um, a tournament run. I think the Big Ten has a lot of different uh, styles. We have a lot of different qualities within our teams, and we have a lot of good coaches in our league. So that gives us confidence. It gives our staff confidence to tell our team that a lot. We're in a great conference to prepare for all different types of teams. Some conferences kind of play all the same way. Um, and that I think is one of the big, big things. And then yes, defense, um, you, you gotta, you gotta be good defensively to, you know, to, to go deep. I mean, you can win some games um, and, and get a couple breaks here and there, but that's not going to work for five or six games. It just won't. And, and no sport will it um, unless you are that dominant offensively that no one has a solve for you. And that's certainly not us. So we, we have to be good defensively. And that starts with the way we defend up the field and just the mentality and also just the execution of our principles. And when we get um, into 2v2, 1v1 scenarios where our help is, um, our communication, all things we just really hammer all the time, that gives us a lot of confidence. So if our, if our attack is a little, uh, little off, which it was certainly more in the second half, um, 
in the Brooklyn game, we can get through it with with good defending and the, the guys have confidence that we have a couple guys that can get a goal for us and, and, and not have to get 10 chances, maybe one or two. Jack Edwards and Kevin Brockway. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned um, loss and going out with the cramp. Um, I feel like towards the end of that game against Brooklyn, players are falling down left and right with the cramps. Um, is that a product of um, kind of the short layoff and then the immediately intense game, the conditions, um, a hot match, as you mentioned in the last press conference? I'm interested in how the conditions of the tournament affect the fitness of your guys. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it, it was hot. We, you know, a lot of the teams here have not played in heat. Marquette being another one, that was their first game in heat. Um, at the day, I'm sure they're a little bit um, feeling that. Yeah, I mean, we, we really have been above 60 a couple times. Um, we train in the morning. So even days that got warmer, we, we haven't felt the heat of the afternoon. And so that did have an impact. I thought our guys handled it overall well. I thought our uh, I thought Brad and our staff did a nice job, you know, preparing them physically for, for what we could uh, feel. Um, and then you have a little bit of the first game anxiety that I think is always part of the NCAA tournament. And that can make the body stress a little bit more. But clearly the team that was hurting more at the end was more Brooklyn. So I think our, our fitness is in a good place. Um, we have enough depth that we can go to to spell guys. And I think some of our players actually getting into better form physically as the season's gone on. Jack, but your question about the layoff. I felt that probably had an impact on our, our a little bit of our sharpness and edge. Um, you get into a rhythm of playing four or five days, and then all of a sudden you have a 15 day layoff and you have to be very careful in your trainings leading into the tournament of like keeping it competitive, but also not over overdoing it. Cause the last thing we needed is to take a, a an injury in training. So we do train a bit different in the tournament than we do in the regular season early. And I think that showed at times a bit in that game, I think, kind of getting back in the ring, if you will, I feel like we'll be a bit better Thursday in a couple areas of our game that maybe even weren't as sharp on, on uh, Sunday. Kevin and then Doug Watley. Yeah, Coach, you've probably seen a lot of different <clears throat> goalkeepers approach penalty kicks in different ways. What, what makes Roman effective and unique in those situations? Well, he has a great ability to he said explosive and long. So you take the physical talent that he has and then He's, he's very good at, um, at reading kickers, and he has good instincts. Obviously, we, we look at um, our opponents and you know, give information to Roman. He takes that as he, as he will. Sometimes he, uh, we don't over, overdo it with the scout because you know, players can change things up, go the same side. You can, you can have all different types of theories on what you do. Um, and he has a couple of things that he probably just likes to keep in, in his own in his own head. So I don't, I don't know if there's a Roman secret I could share with you because he doesn't share it with me. Um, you got all the goalies jumping up after saves and hitting the bar and, and Roman just gets up and walks to the others and said like, okay, give me the next one. And he'll celebrate at the end. But uh, I love his, his demeanor and the way he just goes about it. He's not, there's no drama with Roman. It's like, yeah. And I think that's as intimidating as anything. The, the, he doesn't show any emotion. Um, he is so confident in his ability, but in such a intentional way. And there's just no arrogance in that kid. It's just pure confidence and preparation. And that what gives him his edge. Doug and then Matt. Hey coach, um, Charlie told us that you guys left for carry on Monday. So you've been there for a couple of days now. Uh, I'm just curious on how much you've been able to train there then what else maybe off the field that the pit, that the team has been doing to occupy their time? Well, when we left Wilmington, we, we went over to the beach, which was a good spot. We spent some time there, which was, which was really fun for the guys to get in the water. And, you know, you know, anytime you're near the ocean and you have an opportunity to do so, you're going to get in the water. So that was Monday. We did that on their way out. We kind of had to stall the day a little bit because we couldn't check in until the afternoon. So our recovery was Monday in Wilmington, a little bit of the, the ocean was part of it. And, and then um, really the rest of Monday was kind of more recovery and meals and kind of getting settled. Yesterday we had a nice session, um, kind of late morning. And then um, a couple of meetings, meals, the guys are playing some fun games. The card games are going well. They're playing some board games in, in, our, uh, in our team meeting space. They're having some good battles. Um, 
and that's keeping them you know one engaged and and having a good time and laughing you got to keep them really really enjoying it outside of the the work that we do in between the training and the games i think that's important you got to keep them loose and the, the staff's doing a really good job and the, and the seniors are doing a good job with that um and then we'll train this afternoon we all have designated times to train so we don't get to pick it um, we had testing this morning we just got through that so we're good to go and um it is a little bit more downtime in the hotel. We're not really going, we're not going to restaurants. So, you know, we would be getting out of the hotel a little bit more, but we've, we, we've been as creative as we can. And, and Paula, our Diops, um, he's been, been magical and changing up the foods and keeping the, 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 the meals and everything going great. So guys are super happy right now. Matt and then Jack. Hey, Coach, uh, you touched on how it's a different matchup with Marquette, but they still have some guys that can make runs and sort of put pressure. Uh, is there anything, any one thing from the Brook Brooklyn match that you want to focus on heading into this match? With regards to Marquette or just the things we could have done better, Matthew? Uh, with regards to Marquette. Yeah, I mean, Marquette, um, I mean, their striker is a handful. He's uh, he's one of the semifinalists for the Matt Kerman. He's, he's been their key guy. He's strong. He works his tail off. Um, he makes good, well-timed runs. He's able to create in his own. And then they have a lot of technical players in the midfield that um, you know can either beat you over the pass or off the dribble. Um, they're really bought in as a group. So I think the, the grittiness that we saw with Brooklyn, I think will get similar, obviously, against Marquette. Um, they're usually a more expansive team. This team might not be as expansive, meaning the field doesn't get as big as some other Marquette teams. And, um, but there, there, there's a great belief. So for us, it's just getting back to some of the key moments that we could have done better with on restarts, um, rhythm of the game, um, combinations, where we want to exploit a certain team. So we'll look back at that briefly with the team against the Brooklyn, but we'll, we'll look in the rear view mirror very short in this one. Usually in the, the regular season, I'm looking much deeper into our team. Right now, it's just a little tweaks, show them, and then we get into the opponent but we don't overwhelm them with the opponent either. We just show them, you know, where their strengths are, maybe where we can get some success and let them you just, you know, feel the game. Um, the experience now, the season and the games they've had should allow them to adjust as we need. Um, and obviously with a couple things from the sideline and is really all they'll need come, uh, come game day. Jack? Yeah, you mentioned they have their own Matt Kerman semifinalist, but you have your own as well, Victor Bezerra. What kind of honor does that mean to get one of your guys um, have that kind of national prestige? That's wonderful. And, and, you know, Victor, like any of the ones that have had that, you know, in, in his case, semifinal um, honor, you know, it's the, it starts with how our team does. And there's no secret to that. If your team does well, um, individual honors will follow. And Victor's been – obviously very good uh, this year with his scoring just as he finished last year and uh, not a surprise we, we told you guys heading into the season we expected victor to have um, a really explosive season and he's he's proven that so he's he's very confident um he you know i think our team is is getting even better at finding him where he's best and our movement off the ball when he has the ball i think is improving so, uh, you know, I, I still feel, feel Victor is one that, yeah, teams are going to key on, but we have some other weapons that, you know, if you overplay Victor, um, we, we can have other guys find success. So, and Victor understands that. He's a really smart player and uh, he's a good student of the game. I really appreciate that with Victor. He's always looking to get better and he handles, um, you know, constructive criticism really well because he wants to be, he wants to be really good. And, but yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's really a program honor as much as it is Victor.